morning and welcome to the Breakfast Club. My name is Zoila Ndlobu and you are watching Asake Online. On the show today, I have Mike Dewini and he is the Executive Director of the Bulawayo Vendors and Traders Association. Welcome to the show, Mike. Good morning, Zoila. Thank you so much uh, for having me in the program. Mike, for the benefit of those who might not know, please just give us a brief history of EBVTA. Bulawayo Vendors and Traders Association is uh, an association that champions the interests of uh, vendors and informal traders in Bulawayo uh, and ac across the country. Uh, we work in a number of uh, cities. Uh, our business is very simple, is to make sure that the, the, uh, the interests of the traders are advanced and their rights are enjoyed. So we have been working um, here in Bulawayo for the past uh, four and a half years. Uh, we were founded in 2015 uh, with um, a simple objective of uh, trying to uh, create space for traders to uh, advance or advocate for their issues and demand better working conditions uh, in Bulawayo. And thereafter, we've been expanding, like I have said, uh, working in other uh, cities, for instance, before Swange, Whitebridge, Gwanda, Harare, Gweru, Kariba, just to mention but a few uh, cities in the country. Okay, so you are Bulawayo, but you are national, basically. Yes, we are Bulawayo in terms of name, but uh, national in terms of operation. Okay, yes. so um, how have the vendors and the traders that are part of your association um, been assisted by you? I know you said you do lobbying and stuff, but what are some of the practical things that your members have gained from being part of your association? Yes, I think I'll give something very practical that we did in Bulawayo. Um, about two years ago, we we were able to produce a model by law. Uh, after doing a study, uh, working with um, a, a, a research institute here uh, in Bulawayo, the study was focusing on just understanding one, patterning and growth of the informal sector, two, uh, the institutional complex, three, and the propping city planning and designing. And from that, that study or that research, we then discovered that the bylaws that were being used by Ulao City Council were outdated, were overtaken by events, were no longer in line with the current constitution. So what we did then uh, worked on a model bylaw that we submitted to the city of Ulao for consideration. Uh, and then they did an analysis of our bylaw compared to their own draft. And I can celebrate today and say that uh, last year in December, uh, uh, the new bylaw was gazetted uh, as a special instrument of 181 of 2020, having considered our input that we had submitted to the city of Bulawayo. So that's one practical thing that we did uh, as an association. Uh, above uh, other things that we've been doing around advocating for uh, uh, proper trading spaces, um, advocating for the recognition of the informal economy uh, uh, broadly uh, in the country, uh, uh, advocating for a um, uh, gender responsive uh, uh, interventions in the formal sector that uh, that look at the uh, uh, special interests of women, uh, just to mention a, a, a few things that we have done. So we have been doing all this work, even training vendors on social economic rights, uh, engaging uh, various government uh, departments and its, its, its agencies to try and uh, arrogate uh, the rights of uh, our traders. So this is what we've been doing. Uh, in the country. So currently we are doing some work, uh, like I said, across the cities, we're trying to look at their bylaws also. We are discovering that, that some bylaws are not out, outdated in other cities. We are discovering that traders actually disorganize other cities are trying to bring them together so that there is that uh, co-creation between them and the GDP areas, in this case, supply side, uh, I would say authorities. Um, at the moment, there is this exercise of where there are going to be 15,000 vaccinations specifically targeting vendors and traders. Tell us about that exercise, Gonzaga So in the Valley vaccination, in the ABC Kangasangayo, uh, we've been doing a lot of advocacy uh, to recognize uh, informal economy workers as frontline service providers. And what we meant is that uh, the government was supposed to also prioritize them since they anchor the economy. I, I think that uh, whoever is going to be, um, or is, is going to be watching this uh, program or is, going, or is watching it now, is a way that uh, our, our economy is predicated on the formal economy. 70% of our gross domestic product comes from the informal economy based on uh, evidence that the IMF has given us to say that uh, uh, our GDP uh, uh, comes from the informal sector, 70% of it. So that's quite huge. So then therefore you cannot then um, 
sideline such a, a group that is contributing so much in the economy. So we've been pushing government to say, okay, avail the vaccine, the vaccine to the uh, formal traders because they are the economy. They open the space for them to trade. Don't close the business. Because if you close the, their business, they are closing the economy. So then the government it to respond. Uh, uh, fortunately, with that uh, blitz that you are seeing, uh, that is to, that will be uh, um, going for the next day. Uh, I think now it's seven days or so. It was a ten-day uh, program. So what has been going on is that uh, uh, the government announced the the vaccination uh, uh, blitz centers across the city, and uh, we have been mobilizing our members. Uh, and encouraging them to go and access the, 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 the vaccine through using various mediums of communication. We've been using radio. Uh, this program also is going to assist also to further encourage others to take part. We've been using the WhatsApp platforms uh, and other spaces to say, use also the snowball, encourage your neighbor to go and uh, uh, get, get the vaccine. So this is what we've been doing as an organization. And also you've been monitoring uh, the process itself, how, it's, how it has been unfolding and engaging the authorities in terms of um, giving them feedback on what each other are saying or the concerns that you are raising in as far as the exercise is concerned. Wow, 70% of our, um, our economy is supported by informal traders. That is a huge number, Mike. Yeah, it is, it is very huge. It is very huge indeed. It's, it's quite so, significant. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So go previous lockdown, when everything shut down, that made basically, like you said, the economy shut down because when informal traders are not working, that meant that the country is basically starving if they were stuck at home. The economy was at stand still. That's, that's a fact. Uh, when we had the initial lockdown in March last year, there was total shutdown. And I, 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 our belief also is that there was serious knock in the national discourse. Uh, 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 so, so you then uh, see uh, the, the ramifications of that in terms of access to basic services, even for the government to function because uh, it's getting uh, a lot of taxes from from traders through validity tax, through presumptive tax. So obviously there was there was there was a, 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 an impact. So in that in that process, we then say government, but then you cannot close uh, the economy. You we need to find a way. Uh, so last year we were doing a lot of work around. Uh, dealing with the cost of compliance, that I think you know that sometime in in August, there about the government started re relaxing the restrictions and people began to go back to work in marketplaces. And we came in with a lot of uh, support through uh, support from our partners in terms of uh, the PEs, sanitizers, masks, uh, hand washing, water dispensers, just to ensure that we reduce the cost of compliance because people are not working then and they're the better to comply. Uh, we, with the COVID restrictions when they are opening, so we're trying to support them. So really, it, it had a lot of impact, even in terms of the livelihoods. Also, people's uh, lives were affected. People were accessing, accessing medication and unable to buy uh, even food. I think you saw the chaos that was happening. People were so hungry. Of course, partners came here and there to support in terms of providing uh, food hamps, um, food hampers rather. And we, we we were very clear then to say now um, you need to place the livelihoods of traders at the center of COVID. Uh, or COVID restriction or COVID enforcement mechanism. We need to balance that. You can't then say people should stay at home in ways don't provide some kind of uh, a, a support a, or social protection of some sort. So we have been very, very uh, clear to say that there is need to balance uh, the enforcement of COVID restrictions and also the issues of our uh, livelihoods. And we are seeing that happening now through this process of actually even uh, providing this uh, police that is targeting solely the formal traders. So Mike, what are the requirements for uh, a vendor or a trader to get a vaccination? What do they need to bring? What do they need to take there? Um, from, from, from what we, we, we received from the authorities, um, it's basically, I would say, uh, I would say three things. Uh, one, uh, if you have a trading license, you, 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 you carry it with you uh, to, to the center. Uh, for those that are having, having those licenses, for those that are working in uh, markets that are actually privately owned, because you find that some traders actually they are renting space from uh, people who own land. So they don't have the specific license, but the property owner is the one who has a license to then run, say, a flea market of some sort. So those traders could they use the, the register of, of people that are operating from that uh, market. So you need a license uh, or a register or a letter that comes from the property owner. Uh, for me, that, that also uh, would actually show that you are from, from that. But from, the, from what they, 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 they circulated from, from the local authority, 
the specific they say the uh, license and the uh, register from uh, uh, from the market that you one is operating from. But of course, you need to carry your ID. Uh, that's very obvious, so that they are able to capture your details when they are giving you uh, the vaccination uh, certificate. What happens to those vendors and traders who fall outside of those requirements? Only a registration, or who's not on a register, who doesn't have a trading license? What then happens to the informal informal trader? Yeah, that, that, that's a that's a challenge as well. That's a challenge that we also observe. There are those traders who don't have all these um, uh, who trade. I would say from undesignated kind of uh, spaces. That's a challenge that we, we need to grapple with. Uh, uh, but our recommendation is that uh, they should come uh, to associations like ours. And then we may then engage the authorities and say that uh, these people are genuine traders, but maybe they are lacking in terms of the licenses or evidence that they are trading. And maybe we can engage, but we've been actually picking some of those challenges. And uh, I'll say, unfortunately, uh, but we have been trying to raise this with the authorities. And maybe there will be a way, since this today is, I think it's day, day three, of the, of the blitz, I think on day five or day six, perhaps some of these things would have been, ad, I mean, addressed. But we are recommending, we are encouraging them to uh, approach the associations and then see if we can recommend by maybe writing letters to say that they are bona fide traders, but of course they lack some of these uh, requirements, and then perhaps they, they could be assisted. What is an approximate figure of traders in Bulawayo um, registered and unregistered, roughly? I'll give you the specific figures uh, that I have. Um, I think from what I got from Bulawayo City Council, sorry, uh, it's they have about five thousand nine hundred and thirty-three that are registered, uh, and then about um, sixteen thousand five hundred and nineteen uh, who are in their database, but are still looking for trading spaces. Predominantly, these are in the town, not in the high density areas in the townships. So that's what is there. And I was saying, uh, generally, our approximate, uh, maybe say plus or minus 20, 25,000, they're about uh, traders in Bulawa. Yeah. There's still a shortage of vaccines to cover the full vendor and trader population. Yeah, yeah. Based on what we have, uh, if, in, if, you, if you look at these figures, 15,000 uh, doses will take up takes about uh, 80 or 90 percent so maybe in terms of the head immunity in the informal sector so to speak yeah it would be significant i i, I, would, I would say that it would, it would have gone a long way but uh, uh, broadly in the state of Fulawa, I, I think we still maybe have a long way to go because also the the sixteen thousand is the people who have registered to look for space and there are yes. people who are not part of that system who haven't registered yes. to look for space and they are yes. out there that's what I was saying. Maybe we can argue and say 25, 30,000. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. So, Mike, after this exercise, what are your hopes? What are, we, what are you hoping to gain? What are you hoping to achieve for your informal sector? No, we, we hope that uh, after the vaccination exercise, um, not only for the informal sector, because I, I think there's, there's a correlation with other sectors. So, our view is that, uh, of course, we are these frontline service providers, but also we think that the vaccine must be made available even for other citizens so that uh, we uh, achieve herd immunity as a city and then we'll be able to, to relax or fully uh, remove the restrictions and be able to live our normal lives. I think if you are seeing, uh, if you are following maybe the uh, current, uh, I mean, affairs, there's the global, I mean, the European uh, soccer jamboree uh, that is happening right now. We are seeing other citizens actually enjoying their lives in stadiums uh, without masks, and because somehow maybe they have achieved the herd immunity, they have vaccinated people uh, in numbers in those countries. So we also hope that uh, if the vaccine is better available, and um, I was reading yesterday, actually I saw videos yesterday that we received. I think they said about two million. They've been posting that on the news and other spaces. So I think if that vaccine is better available to the people. And then we just as well, we, we get around maybe 70, 80 percent people vaccinated. And then we begin to move, go back to our normal lives. But of course, exercise a, a, a caution in terms of trying to continue a, abiding by the protocols where possible. So, so for me, I think we, we want the vaccine. My hope is that we're going to continue working 
and the children are going to be allowed to work in marketplaces and we kind of relax the strictures in terms of after the, vaccine, the vaccination process has, has been done. Because also we were having hearing rumors of lockdowns and exemption letters, but self-employed people are their yeah. own employers. So how will they then get letters? So yeah, yeah, do you yeah, think sure. the card will then enable them to keep um, working through a lockdown if it had to become more severe? We we are we we are against a, a hard lockdown. We think that is not sustainable because if you do that, then the moment you open, people get out there to maximize for the time lost, and uh, they, is, they throw caution to the wind. So they have been so. We think that uh, it, it must be about getting people vaccinated uh, in as in as many numbers as possible, and then uh, relax the restrictions. But if you if you close. People, when they get that time to get out, I think the hell will break loose. Each people get the virus because we're trying to make up and forget about the, the precaution. So in our view, we think that the government must actually work so hard uh, to talk about the surplus. Uh, I think Professor um, Tuli has been saying that the surplus, let's get the vaccine for the people and, uh, and they get working as a country and get the economy working. Our hope is that we're going to continue working uh, perhaps with more relaxed conditions than a harder lockdown because we don't think that's sustainable. What has been the response from your members about this vaccination exercise? By Hamba, are they saying no? Maybe what? What's the, what's, what's the response? By Hamba, uh, effect that by Hamba, uh, we, we are by Hamba, and we are very very uh, happy about their response. They are they are by Hamba civilly uh, in numbers, um, uh, and they are, they are encouraging each other because they understand. Uh, the, 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 the implications of not getting vaccinated, that we then push ourselves to add lockdown that is very severe in terms of impact and also in, in terms of in the impact of their livelihood. So, by a humble banning, civilians, I speak about Kulma and Makrobin, they are telling each other, we are communicating, sharing information. We, we also have what we call market bailiffs with uh, our agents, centers that are moving around, also monitoring, giving us. A real time update in terms of what's happening, even encouraging other teachers to go and get vaccinated and encouraging them in terms of the benefits of uh, getting vaccinated. So, by a humble civility, so our winning. The dates, the exact dates that this exercise is running from, when, is it, when did it start and when is it anticipated to end? It's a 10 day uh, blitz. Uh, it started uh, from the 6th to the 10th day. So, okay. I don't know which day is that. I think it's the 16th of school, yes. Yeah. All right. Do you have any last words to our viewers um, who are watching you right now? Uh, there is so much uh, misinformation and fake news that are circulating about the vaccine. Um, and the people are being told lies about, about the vaccine. And the people are being told that they are, they are, they are going to, to die if they get the vaccine. And I've been arguing that uh, if I read my Bible, my Bible says that uh, this world is a like, good I don't think you are pushing a vaccine. The vaccine is not, not fire for me. So people must get the vaccine. And also people must not believe I'm a prophet of doom. Uh, uh, they don't know anything. They are doing as if they have lived the next day. They don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, let the health experts lead us because they've been even vaccinating us from some Dallas circle and Lango Siawada Mavele. So my, my encouragement is that Avanda Baham very large so that we achieve yet immunity and uh, let's uh, disappoint the prophets of doom. Uh, for, our, for the sake of our lives. Okay. And yeah. where are the centers? Where are the main centers that are currently vaccinating people, just for information's sake? Um, I will mention those that I just I have, I have offered. Um, I know that there's a large city hall here in the city, in the CPD. Uh, there is Kulumani Wall. Uh, there is uh, somewhere near Rengin. Uh, there is signpost in Country Park. Um, and others that I forgotten off head. Yes, okay. but uh, okay. if people want that information, they can, can, can get in touch with us. We, we have that available within on WhatsApp groups. Uh, we are circulating a public letter we got from Bulao City Council uh, that actually has the, uh, the list of uh, uh, the centers. Okay, so it's not just the city center, it's everywhere. All the Manuichini. Everywhere that the, the vaccination program is accessible to the people. Yeah, it's but we, we think that we could even do more. It's available for now, but I think it could be, it, more could be done in terms of even making it more accessible. But it's better, at least uh, in some areas, people can access it. 
Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Mike, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. And, thank you so um, much. We appreciate all the work that you're doing. And, and I'm still in shock over the 70% um, number. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a well, sector that cannot be ignored. Yeah, this it, is it a can't. Sector that's the economy. Yeah, it, it, it can't. It can't, yes. It, it can't. You, it talk, you are frontline workers and of the economy and everything else. So yeah. all the best in your endeavors. And we look forward to having a catch up once this exercise is done and once other issues that are, that are relevant to the sector pop up. Thank you so much, Zoa. And thanks for having us here. It was our pleasure to share our story. Thank you so much. That was Mike Ndueni, and he is the executive director of the BBTA, Bulawayo Vendors and Traders Association. Unfortunately, that's all we have today on the show, but please do remember to stay masked up, sanitize your hands, maintain social distance, and stay at home if possible. Thank you for watching Breakfast Club on Asakia Online. Goodbye for now.